Hello. I've got to say I'm very impressed when I was your age many, many years ago. I was sitting in a pub at 5 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. I, I, I'm, and I also have to say I'm, I, I'm so impressed with the students that I have met here. Uh, uh, they're engaged. They're self-aware. They're motivated. There's a passion. Um, old people oftentimes you know, doubt the previous generation, but, but there, there's no doubt about uh, Bowling Green students that I have met. I'm very impressed. Um, the, 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 my talk is about an industry that for 25 years that we've been sort of pioneers um, working on the foundation. And I'd like to say that, that the creation of this multi-billion dollar industry was due uh, in some part to our brilliance. But it, as you'll see over the next eight to ten minutes, it was just a series of stumblings uh, <laughs> that got us where we are right now. Uh, the title of my talk is, is, is a rework of, of Gene Poor's uh, uh, many of it witticism about it's only work if there's something else you'd rather do. And most of my career I fought um, uh, um, aggressively against having to do any work but to follow my passions. Uh, um, the next slide, I have a confession to start off with that um, I attended the College of William & Mary not because of my high school academics which are very mediocre, it was the fact that I could play football that was 50 pounds of muscles ago. And, and, that, and that the only reason I graduated is I exchanged Spanish lessons tutoring for martial arts classes. And so I, I squeaked out. So there's no brilliance here. It was simply a matter of finding a passion. Because my passion has really evolved around the, um, gosh, the last 25, 30 years around movement. That's it. Now, this is the earliest reference that I could find to, to an aha moment, you know, that moment of clarity that we all experience. And what I want to tell you about is, is five of such moments, literally over 25 years, that took us down a path that many of you will be uh, cognizant of, and I think many of them are probably addicted with the outcome of that path. Uh, that's probably a, a pretty important part of your life. The, um, okay, I'm gonna... Now, the, the first aha moment that, that, that we stumbled upon was way back when, in 1985, my wife and I were asked to, to teach martial arts lessons. That's not our profession, it was our avocation, our passion, to a bunch of little kids at a local YMCA. And it was the cutest little thing. They all, you know, they all looked like baby ninjas. They were chubby little kids. And, and, and we, it was a frustrating experience, quite frankly, in that, that there, there was no feedback for these poor little kids. They, they punch air and they can't punch each other. And, and, it, and it tried to teach them technique, you know, in any serious manner was really quite fraught, you know, with, with frustration. So in this moment of desperation, we jury-rigged a device to measure impacts to a body or to some type of implement. We thought if we could introduce some feedback to these little guys and girls that they would be more compliant to our exercise prescription. Um, and, it, and it really, the, the results were miraculous. I don't need to turn and point. This is, um, we commercialized a line of products. That's me, the dummy holding the dummy on the right. And, and, but the idea was that you'd hit and then you would get a reading on how hard you hit. And I remember taking it into this little karate class with these little kids between 5 and 12 years of age and holding it just like I am there, not taking the same kind of impact. And, and Sarah might hit with 15 pounds and her brother, you know, Johnny hits with 19 and they go back and forth. And literally within about 20 minutes, they made more progress with us than they had made through my teachings over about three months. And then we realized that there's immense power to feedback, to, to immediate real-time feedback. And, and we got a lot of positive exposure. We did a series of ESPN shows on PKA, did some ABC shows. I had a punch off with Michael Spinks when he was a world heavyweight champion. There was just some really cool stuff. But I, I had violated the first rule of marketing. Oh, gosh. You're ahead of me there. Well, if I do. Okay, let's, let's try again. This is where I insult my wife. Can you go back? <laughs> what, what, who happens to be here and can take me in a fair fight? Okay. Okay, well, I, I apologize for that, but uh, can you want to give it one more try? You're, you skipped over eight or ten slides. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, um, this is a Woody Allen quote that I just got a kick out of because the first mistake that I had made is I violated the first rule of marketing. I did not go where the money was. And, you know, that, that 
it, it's a small market in the martial arts and boxing that we were involved with. And again, it wasn't a full-time profession anyway, but it was a mistake that I had made and learned from it going forward. Um, okay, here it is, yeah. Yeah, the, and, and so that really hit home. So we said, okay, we've got this technology that at the time we had three patents on. Where can we apply it where we can do greater good and generate a fair return on our investment? And this is, when, this is where we felt that we go into patient care, physical rehabilitation, senior fall prevention, and, and very much similar. Okay, and here's the picture of the next, it uh, happens to be my wife um, in the picture. Um, we don't pay well for models, <laughs> and, and, and she's very compliant. But it was a real cool system, and it allowed us to look at things like, you know, reaction time and mobility and such, and was used widely in, in uh, rehabilitation, even to this, this date. Now, the, the, the next, um, you know, the second was, the, the, as I mentioned, I, I, had not, uh, uh, I had not assessed the market potential adeptly and, and, and suffered for doing it. The, but the third moment was the idea, uh, the recognition that we live in an interactive world and that if anyone who's been in rehab or even sports training recognizes that, that, that we do not replicate the demands of being on a field or when your grandmother's walking down the street and there's a patch of ice that she didn't anticipate, how well do we interact with our world? And this Woody Allen quote I just got a kick out, but, it's, but it really is indicative of concerns that we all, may all have. And, and uh, okay. okay. There we go. Okay. Now this is, anyone else old enough to remember the Clouseau movies, the Pink Panther, the Return of the Pink Panther? One of my favorite movies, but this is right after uh, Chief Inspector Dreyfus shot his own nose off. And, and the, the, the point there was this, this aha moment that it, during my, my competitive days back in the 70s, I had broken my nose seven times and, um, on the receiving end of shots of better guys than myself. And, and I realized that never once in training did I get injured. Just like many times in training, that, that young female athletes, when they blow out an ACL injury, they don't, it's not from contact that they get the injury, it's the fact that they put themselves in a precarious position. And it was the interaction of your senses, your vision, your auditory, your brain and your body all have to work together. And the reason I never got hurt in drills is because they were pre-planned. It was only when you introduced this, this interactivity, the unplanned aspects of it, that, that injuries occurred. So we said, look, we've got to, we've got to introduce into the process interactivity. And this is our next product, which Disney became our very first customer. Um, the idea, uh, those platforms are very sensitive um, uh, force measuring devices. And I, remember, this was back in 1992, 93. And then the, the, the lady in this example would respond to the changes in location on the field. So this is just about 20 years ago. Okay. Um, oh, and then, and then this, um, excuse me. All right, now, th now th the next aha moment, the fourth one, to get us where we want to go in just the next couple minutes is, is the idea of tracking three-dimensional movement, not simply on force platforms or 2D like the Nintendo units or whatever, but actually three-dimensionally. So, uh, and this was something my wife had written to a friend that when I first jury-rigged the first product to do this, you know, we were tracking using infrared, that I was in our, our garage um, workshop and, and Mary wrote that, that it was the strangest feeling, it wasn't an interactive game, this was 1994, is, is that I would move and the character I control would move and I'd move back and it would move and it was like I had a new friend, in fact it was my first real friend. <laughs> it, was just, it, was, it was just remarkable and I, then I realized this, this power of, of three-dimensional tracking because it's more accurate analog of real world uh, uh, events. Okay. Now that, that this product was first shown, and, and it was bought by Disney at Epcot and Tom Morrow's land. It's on the left-hand side, the Tracer unit back in the mid-90s. Mid and, and we got an invitation to speak on Oprah with the Surgeon General. That's Satcher in about 2000. And this this uh, aged me many, many years. It, 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 the rehearsal went beautifully the night before with Oprah. The next day... Um, when they put the cameras on, which have infrared range finders, which competed with our sensors, we're sitting there filming in front of a live audience for about 20 minutes as they're sitting there waiting for me to figure out the problem. Luckily, we did, but it, but it wasn't a, a very pleasant ex experience. Um, it was memorable, and, and probably the main reason it was memorable was the first time that my dad believed that I was gainfully employed. It was, it was really, it was re really uh, uh, cool. Um, and now, I'm, 
yeah, I'm doing fine. Uh, now, the title of this talk, I, um, it, it, it's sort of important and close to home. Okay. Now, this, this, we were asked to, to, um, um, to donate some equipment to the Arnold Classic in Columbus to test the fitness contestants. And our product is in that bottom uh, corner. This, this was the technology that we've been you know, um, uh, talking about. Um, and at the time, it required you wear a sensor on your body. It's the belt around the girl in the, in the yellow had to be worn. And, and I took liberties and assigned myself that task uh, um, to do this. And, and, and halfway through the competition, my wife comes over to me and says, you're embarrassing. You've got a, you've got a grin like a Cheshire cat. I'm taking over. And, and I just thought that was ridiculous. But I, there is a picture of me. And I, I just want to know if you want to be a judge. And that's probably how I must have looked. It was a, uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, say. Uh, um, now, the, the, the final point, this um, is probably the, 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 the moment in time that I most truly enjoyed as far as it relates to the business, is that I'm sitting around with a bunch of high school buddies having vivid recall, this is 15, 20 years after we graduated, well, 20 years after we graduated from high school, of football games on Friday night at Rocky River and west of Cleveland. We could remember the temperature, who we were dating, what we wore afterwards, you know, what music they played. But we struggled in some cases to remember who even taught us calculus the year before. I was amazed that, that you know, that, that, that and, and I'm thinking, now how can this be? And of course, it's common sense to all of us, is that you're involving multiple intelligences. It's visual when you're on the football field or in a sports environment, or maybe at your wedding. It's auditory, it's tactile, it's kinesthetic. And there's an emotional context that, that helps imprint this information. And that's when we came up with a line of games and, and, and patents that relate to this kinesthetic learning where you elevate the metabolic rate up, get more oxygen in the brain, and then involve all these senses. And we're real pleased with what it seems to do for working memory with children and, and adults and, and seniors and similar. This is the game. It's a, I, I'm getting a little tight on time. But the idea is as these balls are coming at you and you're controlling the, the, the shield that's... that's um, um, uh, translucent, that you have to hit the right balls to, to solve the, the simple arithmetic problem as quickly as you can via movement. Okay. Now, uh, this is an Alice in Wonderland, actually the Cheshire Cat, which is applicable. But, but I thought this, this sentiment was really on point with us because we went through movement is our life, it's our passion, and as we move from one problem to another, we finally arrived at a, at a solution that we felt is fairly eloquent. There we go. Now, this is our latest product. It's a stainless steel product on the wall. That happens to be my oldest son. Uh, he's red-haired. He doesn't move very fast, as you can tell. But, but it, it, it doesn't require sensor. It measures over a very, very large area. Okay. Now, in closing, forgive me for rushing at the end, I, I like the Jerry Seinfeld um, um, uh, um, observation as well. You know, sometimes the road less traveled is less traveled for a reason. Well, we arrived at this idea of active gaming that you see now, the extra games that you saw, more than a decade be, you know, before the large companies. Um, you know, it wasn't, be, you know, they're gamers and they came in from a totally different perspective. We came in via movement, and it, movement was our passion. These companies that have fine en engineers and such, you know, developed incredibly um, uh, and compelling sedentary games, but that simply was not where they lived. And that gave us this head start. We simply took a path that was less traveled and arrived at a location that, that we're really quite proud of at this point in time. You know, I, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I think I've told you my life story. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, okay.